Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. This is the MG Talk. This is Catherine Gallica. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's always a pleasure to come on and do a podcast. I'm aware that I've got so many podcasts here already and I always want to give people the opportunity to review my podcast, to read my podcast and to be able to go back and reflect on them. So I've been making a concerted effort not to just keep putting more and more on. Uh, so in case you're wondering where I've been, <laughs> I've been around. I've been doing uh, uh, speaking events, I've been training, uh, I also glo- do global mental health trainings um, and I'm writing a book at the moment and about to drop some webinars on. If you're interested in knowing how to access them, they're going to be published um, on my website which is stepupcmg.com it's www.obviously um, you can always write to me if you're interested in uh, working with me or having me um, talk at one of your conferences or your organisation one of the topics of conversation I get asked to talk about a lot of things you can imagine negative thinking I get asked to talk about confidence building I get asked to talk about anger management and emotions and depression anxiety stress I get asked to talk about relationships you know whether it's a partner relationship friendships so many topics I get asked to talk about and one of the areas I talk about a lot is grief or disenfranchised grief or different types and forms of grief as well and I do trainings on lots of these subjects as well as financial health and uh, digital health, uh, working with our devices safely, these kind of things for our mental health. Today, a lot of the conversation was around motivation. So I thought, I'll put a podcast on about this. How do we maintain our motivation? Now, we're more likely to be motivated and inspired to do something if we feel we have a target, if we have a particular goal, that often can incentivize us to be able to achieve something. And there was somebody recently who um, who was saying, uh, not not really, it wasn't actually to me, it was uh, I happened to, for once I was sitting back. I quite like sometimes not being the one that's actually running something or taking something. I like to be in the background And I was sitting, uh, attending something and there was an individual was talking about motivation and they were saying um, that once you achieve a goal, your motivation's gone. Not necessarily. It depends, doesn't it? It depends on what we attach to the importance of something. You know, if you've heard about me talking about the model I wrote about Oh, well, it must be about 25 years now. It's maybe longer than that because I've been around a long time. Um, yeah, I have been. Uh, so <laughs> I wrote a model on think, feel, act. What we think affects how we feel and we're driven by our emotions. So what we feel determines how we act. And if we attach a feeling, because we're driven by our emotions, remember, if we attach a feeling to something, then we're more likely to see the sense of doing something. Equally, if you attach a feeling to something and it's negative, then it's hard to get past it and move on from it. Do you see where I'm going with this? So whether our our goal is um, to get fitter and healthier or to lose weight, whether we need to do so because we, you know, are are going to a special occasion or an event or, or maybe we're running a marathon or it might be that we need to fit into that special occasion where, right? Sometimes, you know, we, we have to get back into our kilt. I'm Scottish, remember. <laughs> Sometimes uh, it might be that you've got to um, get into formal wear or, you know, you're going on holiday and you've got to get into your holiday clothes because you're not buying any more. <laughs> I don't know, I'm making this up. Whatever the goal is, it could be that you're getting married or or maybe you're having some kind of celebratory, you know, milestone of a birthday or it could be you know, a christening or a bar mitzvah or it could be anything. It could be uh, Christmas or Hanukkah. I'm making it up. You see where I'm going with this. Whatever the occasion is, the more that we are connected, the more emotional um, drive that we have, the more powerful that emotion is. 
the more we're likely to achieve it. Does that make sense? You know, sometimes people come to me and they'll say, I need to lose weight. And I'll say, that sounds as if that's something that you have had had a lot of thought to. What's the need about? You know, if somebody says, I want to, then it's something they'd like to do. If somebody says, I need to, there's usually some kind of factor that has been figured in and it's usually something serious. So I said, what's the need about, right? And if somebody says to me, well, it's because my doctor's told me that I'm obese or I'm overweight and I have high blood pressure or I, you know, have health problems and indicators, risk factors here and I need to lose weight. Or it might be somebody um, has been you know, driven to a point where they've decided, they've reached a point where they've decided they want to quit smoking. What's the the reason? What's your why? What's your purpose? Right? What's driving you? What's the emotional connection? Because you've smoked maybe for, you know, five years, 10 years, 50 years. I don't know, right? How long have you smoked for? If it's a reason that is a huge, powerful drive, it's drawing you to the reason, your why. So somebody says to me, I was sitting with my, you know, my wife or my, you know, my children or my grandchildren or, you know, I was sitting with my doctor, whoever, right? I was there with people that I love that I'm connected to. And I was told that if I don't stop smoking, I mean, I used to nurse and I remember sitting in a a medical, surgical or intensive care ward and Mm. and having patients trying to have a quick cigarette smoke. This was some time ago, right? Oxygen and everything, not a good idea. And obviously... It's bad for your health, people. We know this, right? Um, And they would be trying to, you know, they maybe have chronic obstructive airways disease. They might have emphysema, right? They might have all sorts of conditions. And they'd be trying to smoke. They'd be going out with their oxygen tank to the outside of the hospital door. You see where I'm going with this? To get light up their cigarette. And I'd be like, what are you doing? Well, you know, there's no point in me giving up now, they'd say. And I'd be like, listen to what you've just said. Right? They associate the pleasure, the habit, the pleasure, the enjoyment, the association, the emotional association and connection they have is far greater. Now, remember, as human beings, we're drawn towards what gives us pleasure. It's the pleasure pain principle, if you like, and there's been research that's moved further from this. But the basic principle is, as human beings, we don't like to be told we can't have and we've got to do without. None of us like that, let's be honest. And we also don't want to experience pain, usually. Uh, Usually, okay, but obviously there's other experiences, other situations, but that's another story and we're not going down that road. But most of us don't like to experience pain. We want pleasure. Now, pleasure isn't about um, experiencing happiness or joy or contentment or excitement. Pleasure is the thing that gives you the least, I guess, gives you the least hurt or uncomfortableness or the thing that takes you least out of your comfort zone let me put it that way so there's less stress there there's less drain um, it gives you you know it's easier for you in some way that's what the pleasure means so it's not about joy and passion excitement not not that kind of pleasure okay so we're drawn towards something that gives us the least right the least discomfort, the least pain, the least heartbreak, the least it's always about giving us the most pleasure in that sense that I've explained. So if you think about that towards motivation, stay with me, are you? Is this making sense? 
if you think about a goal, a purpose, your why of why you would want to do something, whatever it is, it might be I need to get up early tomorrow and I don't want to, right? What's your motivation? Now, some people are very good at accountability, right? Holding themselves accountable, right? I had to get up early this morning, right? You know, this is like half past four in the afternoon for me right now. I had to get up early this morning. I had clients, then I had a training course, then I was writing material, right? Now, would I like to have had an earlier, longer lie-in? Yes. Could I afford to? No. (laughs) Would I have benefited from it? Probably. (laughs) But I'm good at holding myself accountable. Right? So what I do is I counterbalance and counteract the thoughts that come in. Oh, just another few minutes. No, that's that's not time I can afford. Uh Uh-huh. See where I'm going with this. So it might be, can you hold yourself in check? Right? Now these are things that I write on. Other people might frame it differently. But I talk about anchoring and I talk about holding yourself accountable and holding yourself in check. So it's your frame of reference. It's how you frame things. So if you're looking at, you know, I want to be motivated. I want to feel that I can, you know, reach that target, reach that goal or get up early in the morning or go to bed early at night or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be big goals. It's about what you say to yourself. So what we think affects how we feel. How we feel affects how we act. The actions and behaviours. So if you think about setting yourself up for success. Mm-hmm. So for instance, you know, me getting up early this morning, right? You might be going, really Catherine, why are you telling me this? Because I know it's going to really, you know, it's going to give you lots of, you know, I don't know. Anyway, you know, I bet you're dying to hear. Okay, so anyway, uh, so for me getting up, uh, I planned and prepared the night before, right? So I got ready and I'd ready prepared what I was going to have for breakfast. I was organised, that's what I'm saying. I was organising my environment, I was organising my mind. I had everything ready to pick up, right? So it wasn't like I was going to be running late. So I got up at a time that I needed to get up at. Rather than getting up way too early, I got up at a reasonable time to give me time so I wasn't rushing. But I also knew that I needed to get up at that time. So it's that window, right? It's window of productivity. So if you think about the motivation and that window of productivity for you, how do you prepare for that purpose your why, your goal of being motivated. What steps do you put in place? Now, some people are good at motivating themselves. Some people need an accountability person. I'm big on asking people. I'm an accountability coach. I'm a result coach. So I always say to people, you might want to have an account accountability coach, a result coach. But equally, you might have a best friend or you might have a brother or a sister or an auntie or a mum or a dad or whoever, right? It might be a neighbour. You might have somebody that could be your accountability person. But I always say, it's always good to find someone that will do their accountability role with strength, with purpose, but also with kindness. You don't want somebody who's going to be shouting at you, right? And maybe you do, but I don't, okay? <laughs> so you want somebody who's going to be encouraging you and supporting you, reminding you, challenging you, holding you accountable. But you don't want somebody who's going to be giving you a lot of grief because it puts you off. Well, it does for me. And a good idea is if you have an accountability person that you're accountable for them for something. So it's counterbalanced, it's equally balanced. Okay, so you're thinking about what your goal is, you're understanding what your why is, you're setting up your environment for success, you're maybe getting support in place, you're understanding, right, that maybe I don't have to do it alone or maybe I do. So you've got to know 
what you, you know, support you need or not. If you're setting your environment, yeah, you know, when do you make time to prepare and plan? When's the best time to put in place what steps you need to do to be able to achieve your goal, your why, your purpose? So let's say you want to complete a project, whatever it is, right? Whether you're retired, whether you're at work, whether it's a university or an education or you're an apprentice and you've got to do something, whatever it is, right? Let's say you've got to do something and you've got a time scale or you've been told set a time scale or you know you've got to set a time otherwise it just won't happen. So what I always suggest is that you decide when's the latest this needs to be done by. Right? Now what people often do is they tell themselves they work best under pressure. So they often leave it to last minute. <laughs> you know, I remember talking to someone who was running a marathon and I was talking to them about this process and they had said, yes, yes, uh -huh. um, so I know my why. Um, I've got people that are going to run with me in certain days at different times. I prepared my environment, you know, so I'm always ready. I know what I need to wear, what I'm doing. I check the weather forecast. I make sure I'm eating well and I've got my nutrition, you know, sorted. I plan my meals. I make sure I'm hydrated. I'm checking my good sleep. They're doing all this thing, all these good things, right? Um, but it was a mindset they forgot to really put in place. They hadn't really challenged and put in place the negative thinking that kicks in. I know I'm all organised. I know I've been eating. I know this is the right time. I'm not supposed to be doing it just now. Mm, right, but does it have to be right now? And they self-sabotage. They kept self-sabotaging. And because they weren't achieving what they wanted to achieve, as quickly the results went as quick as they wanted them to be then they started then saying well you know am I really going to make it you know well I'll put the work in tomorrow right? I'll catch up tomorrow and then before they knew it the procrastination kicked in this overthinking right all of these negative thinking. And what they did was they negated any positives. Another unhelpful tool, if you've listened to my, my negative thinking and unhelpful thinking processes, the podcast on that. Um, if not, go back and review it. Um, they started doing all of these classic unhelpful things. Right? Instead of looking at the helpful patterns and structures and routines to create good, healthy patterns of routines and structures and healthy scripts, mind scripts. So when they presented to me, they've said I can say this, obviously I've got permission to talk about this, even though I'm not mentioning them so you don't know who they are. <laughs> so they said, they said, um, okay, so uh, nutrition is important. I've got that sorted. I've got, you know, my, you know, support system in place, I've got people around me to, to, to support me, that's great. Uh, I'm organising the environment as much as I can. You know, I'm making sure that I'm booking in time, but what I haven't really done is got my mindset in the right place. Motivation, right? I'm not motivating myself in the right way. So how do I do that? So we looked at what motivates and inspires them. And that's the next thing. When you're focusing on your mindset, what motivates and inspires you? Right? Now, most of us need to feel that we are validated. Remember, if you've listened to our sense of belonging and if you listen to Maslow's Hierarchy, that podcast, You've listened to the different basic needs that we have and how these needs develop and become more robust as we progress along the pyramid. Now, if you think about what we need, we need to feel respected and valued and validated and we need to feel we're belonging and 
We need to be able to have shelter and food and basic needs met. And, but we also need to feel challenged. Hey, right? Now, if you're wanting to motivate yourself, you need to make sure that you can self-validate you too. So it's what you're saying to yourself that's going to make a big difference. So what motivates, what validates, what gives you a sense of that dopamine rush that gives you a sense of achievement? And often what we forget to do is we forget to stop and recognise the small steps. Because the small steps that we make help to spur us on and motivate us and keep us going. So all the preparation that they had done, all the steps they put in place, I suggested them that they logged it, they charted it down. They kept a good journal or chart on what they were doing so they could see how far they were progressing. And also I suggested that they started looking at affirmations, they started looking at visualising that, you know, that journey of that marathon they were doing. We have to see it, to feel it, to think it, to believe it. We need to be able to see and feel that we can have that success. A lot of people don't live through that. What they tend to do is they tend to go, I really want this, but it's really hard. And I don't, and they start then almost talking them, well, not almost, they talk themselves out of it. So we looked at, What are the blocks, what are the things you're saying to yourself that are getting in the way of your success? And I wonder if you ask yourself that, if there's something you want to do, you want to be motivated for, and what are the things that get in the way of you doing it? And how do you hold yourself accountable? If there's something I have set down and I want to do, And it can't, it's something that I know that it needs to happen within a certain time scale. Then I hold myself to that time scale. And the steps I put in place, I have rules of thumb, right? I have things that I don't change or move. And there are also things that if I'm moving, I have to do it the next time. I can't just keep bumping it and keep moving it and moving it and moving it. So when we sat down and they talked about how they visualised this marathon and how all the preparation, all the work they were doing, I asked them a simple question. What needs to happen within you for you to believe that you will achieve this. And they stopped and they thought about it. And they said, I need to believe and live it as if it's happened. If I can see it and feel it, and really think about how good it's going to feel. And maybe I need to talk about what I'm doing, let people know openly what I'm doing. So people start checking in, how are you getting on? What are you doing? Or you're doing really well. That will encourage and motivate me. So being open about it. Because that's a way of holding myself accountable. But I need to remember that feeling that I want and that I'm moving towards. So they started recognising we're led by and driven by our emotions and our feelings. What was holding them back? What was stopping them being driven forward and feeling motivated? It's fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of not succeeding. Maybe maybe they've taken on too much. Maybe this is overwhelming. What if what if what if I don't make it? Right? What if I don't what if I what if I start and then I can't I can't complete it? What if I injure myself? Right? What what if I what if I start giving up smoking? And what what if what if um what if I'm not really committed to it, right? And I tell people I am, and then they find out I haven't. I haven't given up. 
you know, there's the fear. So I'd said, okay, well, well, let's face that. Let's face that. Is it, is it worth doing it? And they went, what do you mean? And I said, well, you've already convinced yourself you're not going to do it. You're already facing this task, you know, this goal, as if you haven't succeeded because you're talking about failure. You're living failure, you're living rejection, you're living disappointment. How would you feel motivated, inspired? If we want to feel motivated, we have to actually live as if that is something we're really driven and we truly believe is something that's there for us. We need to see it, feel it, believe it. And we need to really start investing in that emotion. How good it's going to feel. What are the feelings around that when we get it, when we're there? What are we going to feel like? What are we we going to look like? How is it going to be? We have to get into that, step into that. And that's what they did. Whenever they got on, there was a road they ran on. Whenever they got on that road and started running, they ran that marathon in their head and they envisaged themselves running towards and getting closer towards that finishing line and every time they finished their training that day they stepped back and what they did was they appreciated they were grateful they acknowledged everything they had done they looked at what they'd managed to do. They looked at what they achieved. They looked at how it was making them feel, how they empowered themselves. And they really built up all that energy and all those powerful emotions and feelings. And they continued to do that, driving themselves forward. Because I said to them, listen, if you're not motivated, don't do it. What are you doing? What are you putting yourself through this for? If it's not for you, find something else. No, 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 I really want to do it. Then you need to get on track with it. You need to get in your head and have that motivation to do it. And that's what keeps us motivated. We need to live the success, feel the success. You see, when I ask my clients when they say they want to be motivated, they know there's a problem. They know something has to change or they know there's something they want to do and they say something has to be different or something has to change or they have to make changes to achieve it. I always ask them, are you prepared to do what it takes to get there? If they do the, um, the answer is (laughs) no. Oh, well, it depends on what you mean by that. No, the answer is no. If they're like, yes, because I really want to get there, then they're really committed. And you have to be saying to yourself, if you're really motivated, I'm all in on this. I'm all in on this. I'm fully in, I'm fully motivated. I see it, I feel it, I breathe it, I live it. That's what drives us forward and gets us motivated. There's times when I've had to be really motivated. I've shared that. I went out to a war zone and we drove two ambulances across Europe, right? (laughs) Into this war zone. Left the two ambulances full of supplies, you know, to help people in crisis. That had to be one of the hardest things. And we were held up, well, I actually, we, I was held up at gunpoint twice. And I had to be absolutely committed and focused and really motivated. And there was a lot of motivation to get there, but there was also a lot of motivation to get back. You have to have real powerful concentration, self-belief. You have to believe you've got it. It's not about arrogance. It's not about being arrogant or overconfident. It's about giving it 
your all and believing that you've got it, that you can do it because you want to. You deserve it. You're putting the effort in and you give it your all. And then the outcome, you then can reflect back and say, I gave it 100%. I was all in. I did myself proud. Many people, when they look for motivation, they come to me and they say, I want motivation first. Motivation doesn't come first. We have to take action, but we have to have our emotions connected to what we want to be motivated for. We need to understand the feeling is what drives us forward. Motivation doesn't appear unless we're prepared to take action. But we're driven by the feeling. What do you want to feel? What's going to get you motivated? What feeling is it? You attach an emotional feeling to something. You're really driven and motivated to get it. Why do you think in marketing and advertising, that's what they capitalise on? Because it sells. Right? Emotion. It's very emotive. Right? Music. Right? It's very powerful. Right? You look at any kind of visual or auditory. You know, it's always there about evoking some kind of emotional response. You know, you watch a comedy, laughter. You watch, you know, something, you know, a, a film that's romantic, right? Does it lift you? What does it do? Or particularly depending, I guess, on where you're at within your own relationship situation, I suppose. But it, you see where I'm going with this? We need to be connected and access what emotion is going to motivate me here. Now, sometimes people come to me and they associate and attach a really negative emotion. People sometimes are driven by anger. Sometimes, unfortunately, they're driven by revenge. Now, anger is exceptionally powerful and it can motivate us to get through something. But the reality is, anger, eventually, if you don't resolve it, it hurts us because it affects us mentally, emotionally and physically. So there are certain emotions that when you're putting a feeling and an attachment to, it's about being careful what you want to be driven by. Yeah? If you think about the kind of emotion that would drive you to feel motivated to achieve something that you want right now, is it to find a relationship? Is it to clear debt? Is it to just live happily and be more contented with what you have? What emotion would you need right now to be able to achieve that goal and be motivated to receive it. So motivation. Remember we need to take action and we need to find that emotion that inspires us to drive us. So hopefully that has been helpful and you've enjoyed listening to me. Until next time, this is Catherine Gallagher and remember you can check in and find out about my webinars, about my book and also about any sort of trainings and if you want me to come along and talk or you want to come on to the podcast and be able to listen to me um, and talk to me um, in person then please feel free to notify me. As always, you can contact me at stepupcmg at xln.co.uk. You can reach me on my website at www.stepupcmg.com. Thanks for listening and dropping in. As always, it's great to have you here. Until next time, bye for now.